Hello dear viewer and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time, I apologize for this long absence. So I'm going to try to make this up with uh, new videos and today I'm going to talk about the AMX CDC. So it's uh, this reward tank that you can get at the moment uh, for just playing the game. It will require to play a lot of games you need like uh, free operations 45 then 90 and then 135,000 points of experience so it's it will take quite a while but today i would like to show you what this tank is able to do uh, so you'll get an idea is it worth it to grind this tank or to pay for it because that's also an option so the amx cdc it's an extremely demanding tank to drive because uh, basically it's like a light tank you have no armor and therefore you're, you're an easy target for a lot of opponents who, who will have no problem penetrating your armor and also they will think oh right if I shoot at this guy it will be an easy pain, easy damage so I will get some experience and credit so you will often be a priority target. The difference is that you are bigger, more massive than a light tank therefore not only you, you will show uh, more of your tanks you will be easier to hit but also you will have a lower camouflage value. So really, uh, in a tank normally you have three ways to protect yourself. The first one, the most obvious one, is armor. You show strong armor, you will bounce a lot of shells or some of them will simply not penetrate your armor. That's uh, the most common and easy way, easiest way sorry, to protect yourself. Second one is camouflage. As long as you are not spotted, no one will try to shoot at you unless uh, they blind shot you it happens from time to time, but most of the time, camouflage is also an incredible way to protect yourself. The third option, which will be favored by light tank drivers, or in this case, CDC tank drivers, uh, will be mobility. The mobility can use as a defensive mechanic, just because you can be where uh, opponents will not expect you, so you can surprise them. And also, you can retreat if need be which can be also a way to evade uh, damage somehow. Also, if you are at full speed, you will be harder to hit. So mobility can be used as a defensive tool uh, in many aspects, but most of the time that will require you to be extremely aware of uh, all allies and all enemies. You will need to check constantly if someone is going to push in your direction, if your flank has already fallen, if you should retreat or just relocate, or if you want to attack, uh, are there any flaws in the defensive system of the enemy team. So basically, being a CDC driver means you'll have to look at your minimap and your surroundings in general, like every 10 seconds. Each time you're not shooting, you're reloading, you check your minimap and you check the enemy positions. It's mandatory and this is why it is quite exhausting uh, to drive this tank honestly. Also keep in mind, since you're an easy target, people will not hesitate to shoot at you and you will be heavily punished for every single mistake you're going to make. So it will be difficult to learn and at the moment, since a lot of people are not really experienced with this tank, there's a lot of newbies driving this tank. Uh, it makes this tank look bad, it is certainly not. It is a monster, but look, I just exposed myself for a few seconds and this time I had no allies to distract the enemies. I got shot three times and I lost, uh, I don't know, more than a third of my life, between a third and a half of my life. It's a lot and I just exposed myself for a very short duration. And that will be a problem for a lot of CDC drivers, how to look after your health. Basically, since you have no armor, you, you can't use armor as protection. Health is basically for as long as you will be uh, useful on the battlefield. As soon as your health drops down too much, you will have to play cautiously, uh, which means uh, that you will be uh, taking less opportunities to shoot at your opponents. This time I decided to choose uh, this Tiger too because shooting at him will not expose my tank to his allies and this allows me to plant a few shots in his ammo rack and this is a way of course to accumulate more damage but for, for the Tiger 2 at the moment it was only because the enemy decided to make a mistake. When you are low on health either you take advantage of enemy's mistake or you have to take advantage of your allies positions 
basically if they are pushing you can follow them and try to accompany them uh, in, a, in kind of a wolf pack let's say wolf pack is a useful um, let's say tactic when you are in a softly armored tank anything that will distract or prevent the enemies from shooting at you will be your best bet to survive on the battlefield it doesn't mean that you have to drive like a jerk and let your teammates take all the shots but you don't want to expose your tank if you don't have to. Uh, opportunities will be basically when you will have the possibility to shoot at your opponent while he will not have the possibility to retaliate. And surprise tactics, wolf packs, um, being aware of your surroundings, taking advantage of enemy mistakes, all of that will be uh, required to have a good game. During this replay, uh, we tried early on to take the control of the mines, which is uh, the most obvious and important choice to make when you're on a medium tank on mines. But um, the enemies had the same idea, obviously, and they defended it very well. It was mostly dominated by the enemy team. However, they paid a high price for it. So even if I lost some health, um, now this part of the map is completely uh, empty. It's a perfect example of what you should be doing and thinking when you are driving the CDC. Uh, where is the least protected uh, path? Where could I sneak up to the enemy? Because you have a lot of qualities. You have a decent DPM, good penetration, an excellent gun depression. So offensive wise, if we combine all of that with the excellent mobility of the tank, you can be, uh, you can be deadly on the battlefield. All you have to do is to protect yourself and try to avoid uh, confrontation, direct brutal confrontation. That is the worst. But here you can see I am driving directly towards enemy lines and I am at the bottom of the hill where three enemies are. But they can't shoot at me without exposing themselves to all of my allies. Which means that uh, in the worst case scenario where one of them will commit suicide to kill me, one of their tank is still going to die. So the ratio of life, let's say, or balance between HP in both teams will still be alright. So I consider this move quite ballsy, but still um, it's worth it. As you can see, uh, those enemies were quite busy fighting my allies. However, I, sh I should have spotted earlier the, the medium tank in D6. Uh, I have a shot at him, I was pretty sure my allies would take care of, of him and I underestimated him. So uh, I pressed forward uh, trying to shoot at this uh, weapon trigger on the 4. Uh, he has a lot of health, uh, so I will not be killing him soon. And now this CDC is still alive, shooting in my back, and as you can see, the accuracy of the gun is not amazing. Especially when you're shooting on the move, uh, because dispersion values are just terrible. So if you have to, um, to trade shots, you will not necessarily be victorious. So I should have spotted the medium, and for this poor awareness, I have been rewarded with a shot in my back and it could have been worse if my second shot missed. It was a shot in movement, it was not necessarily an auto hit at auto penetration. So each little mistake will cost you highly and this is why it is demanding to play this tank but by no means uh, the CDC is a terrible tank. It's just demanding. So if you have already unlocked this tank and you think poorly of it, well it's, well it's your opinion, you have the right to think that way. Just try to switch tank and if you want to get back someday at the CDC, my advice would be to play similar tanks, not necessarily premium tanks. I will give you a list of tanks that behave similarly in some aspects. And those easier tanks could be uh, your first step towards learning how to play the CDC. First off, you could try some lightly armored medium tanks. Uh, the first one that comes to my mind is the Leopard 1, which is a tier 10. If you don't want to go up there, well, the tier 9 is pretty similar to it. But if you have some lightly armored medium tanks, it's a start. Uh, you should have fairly high mobility, but no armor. And those tanks, in my opinion, can be very powerful, but they will teach you how to stay hidden or let's say how to conceal your position on the battlefield and to show yourself only when needed. So basically those will teach you how to control your aggressivity. At tier 6 for example you have the Cromwell, which is quite similar 
very fast, agile, nimble, and it also has a decent camouflage value, better than the AMX CDC. So it could be your uh, your first experience with uh, light armored tanks. Second, when you're quite comfortable with tanks like Cromwell, you could try light vehicles. If you have no experience with them whatsoever, avoid French tanks because it only gets interesting or let's say easier starting from tier 8 with the AMX 1390. Before that it's quite difficult to play them, but you have other nations such as German and Russian with excellent light tanks. I think if you're not... Uh, if you have nothing against autoloaders, I would recommend the American actually. I had a lot of fun playing, well, even at tier 6, the T, I think it's the T37, it's an amazing tank, tier 7, uh, you have T71 or the Bulldog, both are excellent. Really, uh, you can play those and they will teach you um, how to use uh, an, an armored tank on the battlefield. They are more difficult than medium tanks because controlling your aggression and limiting your fire will be more crucial. Just because as soon as you will be spotted, since you will have no armor and no health, it will mean uh, quite a quick death. So they are also extremely powerful but demanding as well. If you want to try a combination of massive silhouette with no armor, you can try another expert tank, it's the Cherry. It's, I, I consider it to be expert because it is not amazing, it's quite underpowered. It has no armor and it is massive so it has no camouflage either. So try to get comfortable with all of those tanks. Uh, try to see their strength and weaknesses. And more importantly, if you're still struggling with any of those tanks, try to play them in platoon with teammates with similar tanks and try to do a wolf pack. A wolf pack is what you have just witnessed during this replay. It's just a bunch of medium tanks uh, sticking together during the entire uh, game, trying to focus their fire on, if possible, isolated uh, targets. But if you don't have isolated targets, try to focus fire on just one opponent at a time and unleash hell. And as soon as uh, this target is dead, uh, continue toward the next one. So it's just a combined power of three, four, five uh, medium tanks with fairly high DPM and trust me it's extremely fun to do. When you will be familiar enough with wolf packs, you will be able to play the CDC even in quite difficult situations like this one. We are not top tier, opponents are all uh, clustered in the same portion of the map so you can't pick isolated targets apart from this very stupid driver uh, in the enemy team. But apart from this guy, you, you will need from time to time uh, to play smartly as a group, even if it's not technically a wolf pack because you are not pushing forward together, you stick in the same portion of the map and you try to support each other. And the CTC is perfect for that, just because you have an excellent gun depression, which means that you can take enemies in crossfire and take advantage of uh, the terrain. Here I am just behind a hill, I'm trying to show the least portion of my tank. My teammates are doing exactly the same from different angles and the idea is just to surprise opponents uh, to make them uncomfortable, to deprive them of key positions. And you will see how fast it can go uh, when you communicate and try to support each other. So, all in all, I believe that this tank is amazing but it is a biased opinion just because it's it perfectly suits my playstyle and it is completely normal. Uh, it, would, it wouldn't surprise me if, let's say, two-thirds of you guys would not enjoy playing this tank. I tried to give you uh, all, the, all the information, but if it's not enough, if it's not your, your type of tank, don't worry, just don't get this, don't buy it. Um, I'm just trying to give all the advice I can for the player who want to try this tank. So in the end, is it worth it to, to grind it or to buy it? Well, just look at those replays and think, would you have fun playing those battles? Those were quite smooth victories, so they represent uh, the best part of playing a tank. I mean, sometimes you will be in a terrible team camping all the way back to the base and you will not have a lot of possibilities. It won't be fun, you will be crushed by tier 9 or tier 10 vehicles because yes, this tank does not have a premium matchmaking. So, if those battles make you want to play this tank, by all means try it and if it's too difficult, try similar tanks that are slightly easier to play first. 
Just before I forget, one last comment of importance. This tank is a money maker. If you play decently in it, um, since it is a tier 8 premium tank, it will have one of the best earnings uh, possibilities of the game. So if you don't have another premium tier 8 tank, uh, this one uh, will, will do the job perfectly. If you have already the Motherland, well, just use the one you prefer. So that will be all for today, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider giving it a like and to subscribe to my channel and there will be more content in the near future. So thank you for watching and see you in my next video.